theyeshiva.net. It's a letter. There's a letter from the Magid to his son, Reb Avram. They called him Reb Avram HaMalach, because he was like an angel. And he wrote to him in Yiddish, Akleina Nalechele in the Guf is a grace Nalechele in the Neshama. A hole, a crack, yeah. A little crack in the goof is a great crack in the song. A large crack in the song. <coughs> Somebody actually told me this morning that uh, he's be- be- recently been taking care of his health, his body, and he's been feeling very guilty about it because he was taught that Gevura Sagov is Sreifus Anashama, that a healthy body is a dead soul. <laughs> I should say not a healthy body, a strong body. A strong body is a dead soul. So he was feeling he had to work through guilt. some uh, some guilt that the body is not uh, is not the embodiment of impurity. Okay, let's continue. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. So we're up to page Nun Zion. Uh, the Maima is from Tufridge Nun Zion, and we're up to page Nun Zion. So quoting the Navi, the Navi Yeshaya, who says, "How you spoil Hagarzen, al hachoytziv boy, shall the axe be boastful and feel superior to the one who uh, who wields it, right?" And the Navi continues. It's in Yeshaya Perik Yud. The Navi continues. Shall the Mosar, shall the sickle feel superior and boast over Menifoy, over the one who raises and again wields the sickle to harvest the grain? That would be absurd, it would be ludicrous. The Novi over there, I think, is talking about Ashur, Assyria, which has become a superpower at the time. The Novi Yeshaya laments the unbridled arrogance of Assyria, which thought that it could control the world. And he compares them to the garzan, to the axe, or to the mosser, to the to the sickle. And later he compares them to a branch, to a shavit, and to a mata, to a stick, all with the same metaphor, all employing the same metaphor, that uh, although we use the garzan as a tool, and a vital tool in order to implement what we have to implement with an axe or with a sickle, or with a hammer, or with a stick, or with a branch. The Pasuk there talks about those four things, the sickle, the axe, and the, the branch, and the stick. Nonetheless, everybody understands that they're merely tools. They don't have pchira, they don't have choice. It's not their initiative. It's exclusively the person who deserves the credit or the blame. Somebody strikes somebody. Somebody uh, uh, uses an axe to hurt somebody, Khalila. So they don't put the axe on trial. Uh, the terrorists, Yemach Shemam, use knives to stab innocent people. They don't put the knife on trial. It's not the knife which is good or evil. It's the knife that does it. Without the knife, the harm wouldn't be done. Without the axe, the tree would not be felled. But it's the person who's fully responsible, both in a constructive way or a destructive way. The person who gets the credit or gets the blame. We're learning in Sachmat, Berber Shusarabim, right? Berber Shusarabim. Yes, it's the pit that becomes the hazard. But the one who's responsible is, can't blame the pit, can't blame the hole in the ground. You could blame the hole in the ground. But that's a very superficial perspective. You have to blame the chayfer barber, shusharam, the one who dug the pit or the one who uncovered the pit. What is the Navi trying to convey here? And that's the mushal that's being brought out. That this is true about so many things in life, and really everything in life. That the divine hashpa, all of life is about yichud Hashem and elikim. Yichud havaya elikim. The unity of Avaya and Elikim. And that unity is not just words. You unify two names. You say Hashem Hu Elikim. That's not the idea of just semantics or using names. Yichud Hashem Elikim is a paradigm shift. It's a way of experiencing life 
not one hour a day, but 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Despite the fact that within this itself, of course, every person can have fluctuations and alias, iridis, changes, etc. And what's the point? The point is that the entire creation on every level, even in the most spiritual realms, is based on the fact that Elikim plays a central role channeling, obscuring, restricting, concealing, forming, shaping, limiting, containing, confining. Do I need more adjectives? Mm-hmm. Huh? Okay. Uh, channeling, yeah. And all these adjectives are true. And there's probably another one million adjectives and more that I don't know to, to describe it. And, and the point is to describe it, because oil has to be described, that's the point. If we didn't have to describe it, then you don't need kalim. The function of kalim, the first function is to describe, to talk, to address, to give shape, to give form. That's even in the most sophisticated, spiritual, transcendent realms. And then, for each descent, it goes through these processes, and then it come into this world. And to be able to create, sustain, give content, functionality, design, purpose, and existence to every single created being and existence on all the levels of creation, including the entire planet and the entire universe. It must go through yet further restrictions and concealments to be able to coarsen. Is that a word? Yeah. Okay. To be able to coarsen, to be able to be magashen, to be able to materialize the light to assume a physical incarnation, and to be able to function in the in the setting that we call teva, the setting that we call nature. But all of these settings and all of these kalim are what are essentially what looks like a hester, but ain't no hester klal, not truly a concealment, just a channel. It's a tool in order to be able to access the air into a particular space and function in a particular fashion according to the capacity of this nivra, of this being, or of this functionality, or of this purpose. And therefore, the proper perspective of a person is when they understand that all what we call mutsoyim, all the intermediaries, and all the kalim and all the vessels are like the garzen biyad hachaitzev, are the axe in the hand of the wielder. Or the Mosar, the sickle, the Yad Hamenif, in the hand of the one who raises it. Or again, the stick in the hand of the one who lifts it. The Pasuk says, Hashem will bless you in all that you do. So there's two dimensions here. On one hand, what's needed is that you should do. He doesn't say you shouldn't do. And the reason you should do is because. If the divine Ashpa is coming through tziurim, through physical forms, through physical kela, whether it's a business, uh, it's a bus- it's a source, it's a it's the source of revenue through a business, or any other hisaskas b'maso matan, as Chazal put it, maso mat, any other form that the person creates a keli to be able to generate revenue, all of these are the levushim through which one can glean. Hashpa, a flow that will be a physical flow. A person needs physical money. They need physical cash. Yes, in Ganeiden, you don't need physical cash. You need spiritual cash. You don't need physical nutrition. You need spiritual nutrition. What does Eichel V'Shoysen mean? Eichel V'Shoysen there is not lettuce or cucumbers or other forms or other foods. He says, it's the, but the, in this world, my goof has to live. For my goof to live, the energy has to translate into lechem, into physical substances, which gives, creates, has the ingredients that the body can, can detect. But what are all these? These are just kalim. These are just channels. The channels may be physical, and that's why one can lose sight of what it really is. He says, really, it's all oil key. It's all divine, divine energy. Processed through many levushim, and that's how we live, and that's how we function, that's how we generate what we need in order to be able to live. I need food, 
I need money, whatever else it is, a person needs, clothes, etc. So if a person has a lot of good things, let's say money, how do we know if that's the mission or the mission? I didn't understand the question. Is there some, when something is bad, you always say that this is only the niche. It's not a God. No, it's not it's about bad or good. It's about a perspective. Yeah. It's always a mush. So how, you can't be a spiritual good thing besides feeling? I, I'm not understanding. Because if somebody has materialistic things, you have an abundance of materialistic. Is that also? So you have a lot of mashalim. Is that also? God mashalim? gave you a lot of mashalim. <laughs> okay, that'd be part of the pleasure, right? Yeah, and every mashal could be a channel for the nimshal. That's the point. Says if some, if I understand the question, if something negative comes to a person, you say, oh, it's only dressed up in negativity. It's the same thing when somebody has a lot of abundance. It could be schar, it could be the war, it could be out of So it's a gewaldic opportunity. There's a tremendous hashpa that this person may have, some person may have hashpa in Ruchni, some person may have hashpa in Gashmis, some person has hashpa in this form and that form. Everything is emotional. Everything is emotional. And therefore, what's the main challenge here? The main challenge, he says, is that when a person really can absorb this, so even as they're involved in a business, it doesn't stress them out, it doesn't overwhelm them, and it doesn't take them away from who they really are. It doesn't take them away from the connection and complete intimacy with the core and the essence of everything. Because they realize that these are all kalim, but the entire hashpa is essentially a lakus. It just doesn't take away a person from Torah, from Tvila. It doesn't stre- it helps a person not get stressed and not engage in sly tactics and shrewd schemes that they feel they have to outsmart other people. And certainly he says not to do things that are forbidden. On the contrary. Because when a person recognizes that it's not this business or this interaction or this scheme that is what I have to worship, it's a channel through which Diriboyner Shalom's energy is being communicated. It's on the contrary. I want the Kaili to be wholesome. I want the vessel to be pure. I want it actually to be able to be a receptacle to the divine energy. If not, the flow itself is compromised. It's, it's cheap money. It's not money I'm going to live with. I'm not going to be able even to enjoy my own blessings, my own gifts. In other words, it's not only good moral advice, it's also good business advice. It's good business advice. So, so how does some, like, like take the example of um, books, like you have... You know, Looks. Homemade, books. You have books. books. You know, homemade, all the Torah books, and then you have the most garbage book, and you have everything in between. How does, so... So how does uh, someone decide how, how much time to spend? I mean, this, I feel that someone should be spending all their time on... These are individual questions. Like he says, how, how, how do you time how much spend? The point is, he says, people, they become so obsessed, that they don't have any other life. And what's the most important things in life become sidetracked and they ignore the most important things. Why? Because the person becomes single-mindedly focused on money. So he says, you have to do what you have to do. Every person has to figure out, but in a way that it doesn't destroy the core, doesn't take away the soul, doesn't take away from the turtles, doesn't take away from the field, doesn't take away from the relationships, from the connections that are vital, not only to yourself, but also to the very hashpa. Because it's essentially all a relationship with the divine. It's just coming now through a different channel. So he says, Weiter. Page Nun Zion, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Ten lines from the bottom. The line starts, The kolza, all this is based on the same idea. In one word, this is Yichud Hashem Elikim. That's what it means. Yichud Hashem Elikim 
is not some mystical, spiritual, heavenly language. Yichud Hashem Alekim can happen at any moment in the day. It's a state of consciousness wherever you are and whatever you're involved in. It's the ability to be able to unify. Vahainu, what do we mean, Yichud? She'ein Shem Alekim, Master Kol Hashem Avayim. Not to allow Shem Alekim to be seen as a Hester, as something that blocks out, blocks, conceals, and therefore in a different realm than Yud Kevavke. V'chol ha'yishavos him Hashem Avayim. All his havas, all of existence, is essentially Yud Kevavke. It's channeled and screened and contained and formed and shaped and described through a Lekim. Umemela, what's the result of this? Yodeya. Shekol ha'memutsoyim. All intermediaries, what do we mean by intermediaries? Channels, all channels, all kalem, all avushim. Like again, the marshal of the teacher and the student. Haim, beginning with malachim angels, mazolas, constellations. Einam klum, mitzad atzmuth. They are nothing on their own. He doesn't say einam klum. If einam klum, so don't make them. Of course there's something. They, they serve a function. Like the marshal also serves a function. Don't divorce them from what they are. Don't divorce them from what their purpose is, what their truth is. They're nothing on their own. They are shluchim, essentially. And we know in halacha, shlucha, shaladam, kemoisai. The shliach represents the mashalech. You could look at the shliach and divorce him from the mashalech. He can also look at himself and divorce himself from the mashalech. But essentially, they're shluchei ha-shefa. They're emissaries that transport the flow. So what do you need these emissaries? Kegarzim, biyad ha-chaitzim. Just like a garzim. And nobody's going to come to the garzim and start appealing the axe and start bribing the axe and start worshipping the axe in order to be able to build them this beautiful uh, kazebo that the axe is supposed to build. So maybe you should start giving gifts to the garzen and decorating it and bribing it and taking it out to dinner and going for a drink with it and sending it gifts, etc. Why not? It's a la, la it's a, it's a, it's a ma, it would be a mockery. What's that? It's a dead, lifeless garzen. Well, you're going to bribe it? What are you bribing? You're bribing a, a doimim, something that's lifeless. But the truth is, everything is a garzen. That's the point. So it could just it's a it's a moving axe, that's what it is. Today we know that there's moving machines, yeah. Artificial intelligence. So you're gonna start bribing it. Doesn't have no it doesn't have no pchirev, as well to. Go to the Khoitsev, don't go to the Garzan. What are you what are you wasting your time with the Garzan? Is the Garzan important? Yeah. But important as what? As something that's wielded by the person who holds on to it. So you're going, to start, you're going to start appeasing the garzin and building a whole life around the garzin and building relationships with the acts. You say, you know, in, in business, very important relationships, right? Networking. you got to go out and you got to cultivate, right? Those who are mumchim in this. So, you, so you're going to start building relationships with the acts because you want a beautiful home. So you're going to, with all the tools, you're going to build relationships. So it sounds funny. And the reason it sounds funny is because we all understand you're building... You need a good relationship with your contractor. That's very important. <laughs> so this, is, this, is, this is good for firm that you need Gashmi in a good way. Money, parnasa, food, etc. So you should look to the Arlo key beneath them as being what you really need. Okay. But suppose you don't have that. Suppose your mom is going hungry. Suppose there's illness. Are you supposed to also see in the illness some Arlo Kim? Are you supposed to see in the hunger some Arlo Kim? Or they just, you're lacking the Arlo Kim of the food, lacking the Arlo Kim of health? Or are you supposed to look at the, at the I don't want to call it the but at, at the sorrow also as, as there being an Arlo key that you have to try to, you don't want that Arlo specific Arlo. So how, do you, how does that relate to when you don't have Parnasi, you're hungry, etc.? That's a very good question. This is all you're saying, what you have. What about what you don't have? Is that also an error? I just want to amplify it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was amplified enough, but let's amplify it yet more. The one who swings the axe, supposedly he's in control of the axe. But many times in business, somebody tries his best, and everything, uh, things don't work out, and he has a big loss. Right. So, 
you feel in a sense that you are not in control and and suddenly uh, everything is upside down and the person could be in debt hundreds of thousands of dollars mm. and he tried his best and how, how do you find a lovely life in that and you feel just crushed okay, you're asking if and you're asking how that's step two so let's first start with if, okay? That's true. That's why we addressed earlier nisyonis. What is a nisyon? Nisyon is a lack. What we're talking now about is a person needs food to eat, a person needs shelter, a person needs uh, revenue, a person needs an income, etc. That's the hashpa. That's the, hash, the way Hashem's hashpa comes in the physical world, through the physical world. Virapa yirape, a person needs to heal. The Gemara says, <laughs> It's a chiddush. As the Evan said, the Mepharshim said, There was a shitta that you're not supposed to go to a doctor. Why? God wants this person sick. You don't believe in Ashgacha. Why are you intervening? Why are you interfering with Hashem? But the answer is that that's antithetical to Yiddishkeit. As the Gemara says, somebody doesn't want to violate Shabbos to save a life, I raise it shoy He's spilling innocent blood. And the answer, of course, is that it's completely not a contradiction. On the contrary, the hashpa of Rafua comes through Verapa Yerapa. That's the Shluchei Hashafa. That's again, Kegarzen, Kegarzen, Biyada Chaitzev. That's again, the axe being wielded. Verapa Yerapa. There's a word the Gemara says in Kedushin, Toiv Shabiroi from Le Gehenim. Right? The best of doctors goes to Gehenim, goes to Purgatory. So it's, it's a difficult Maimah uh, Chazal. I mean, that's how the, the rabbis looked at that, the doctors. Toiv Shabiroi from the best ones. The bad ones go to Ganeidin. The good ones, Toiv Shabiroi from why people run into good doctors. Right? So uh, there's different interpretations, but one of them is Toiv Shabiroi from Le Gehenim. It's the best of doctors, because doctors, present company excluded, best of doctors, or not often, but sometimes, have this ear of uh, arrogance. And when you tell them, I want to ask a second opinion, it could be the worst thing in the world. Some rabbis have the same thing. A second opinion? You know who I am. And that's the first sign you're not dealing with a good doctor. Because the, en- the essence of all growth is humility. The essence of all knowledge is humility. There's an expression in Sifri Machshava from the Rishonim yet. Kol gay shoyta. Gay in Hebrew. <laughs> Gimel yud aleph. Kol gay shoyta. Every arrogant person by definition is a fool. It, it's a definition. It's not a psachidish. It's not a miracle. Arrogance is the antithesis of Chochmah. Chochmah is koyach ma. The ability to say what. Just the ability to say ma. So therefore, toiv shabiroifim. So it's brought in Svarim that toiv is begematria yud zayin. Toiv is seventeen. Toiv shabiroifim. A doctor only believes in seventeen blessings of Shmuel Asra because he deletes the eighteenth. Rifaenu Hashem v'nei Rafei Baruch Ata Hashem Rafei Chelam Isol. There's a Gehen. Now there's somebody who's completely uh, into self-aggrandizement. I am the exclusive master and decider of the fate of life and death. Without the humility, they say there was a Yid, Rabbi Eizel Kharif, he was the Rav of Slonim. So he was once very ill, and a doctor came to see him. The doctor said, it's hopeless, you're going to die, there's nothing to do for you, just prepare, prepare for the end. And the doctor left, he gave up on him. Rabbi Eizel Kharif recovered. And a few months later, he was already out in the street, and he was walking, and he meets this doctor. The doctor takes a look, he says, you? You're supposed to be, uh, you're supposed to be an Eilam Amis, was to So he says, you talk a right, your prediction was right. And by the way, you owe me a big favor. He says, what happened? As you said, I'm going to die, I talk a diet. And I came up. And basically, I see a huge line. And I asked, what is this line? I want to, they say, it's Gehenna. So So who's in the line? They say, doctors. And who do I see? Who do I see first in the line? You. You, you're there. 
and I go over, I say, Rebbe Nishalolam, ask him doctor Nish. This guy is no doctor. This guy is a butcher. You could send him out. He says, you owe me a big favor. I died, I saved you, and I came back. <laughs> I guess that was his little revenge on his doctor. What's the point? The point is not that me- we, we don't dismiss medicine. We don't dismiss herbs. We don't dismiss any physical blessing. Because we know that the oira key comes through these herbs or these vitamins or these, I'm not getting it out to medicine, but any nekuda that says a shlich of the hashpat comes through. Now there's a concept called nesionis. What's nesionis? Which we learned before, we're going to come back. To, what's the concept of nesionis? Is there's, a, there's a mania. There's something being, there's, some, there's a lack. So someone gets a real bad case of poison ivy. <laughs> whatever it is, whatever it is, it's the stress of life. There's the stress of having, a dealing, and running up. There's also the stress of not having. Like he said, defeat, loss, challenge, never mind illness, never mind other nisyoyness, not just financial. Not just financial. But the test of nisyoyness, of having test, could be the opposite also. Everybody knows that. Something that the riches is a bigger Avata, Avata. Because the other way also. Yeah, Nisoyan Ha'ini and Nisoyan Ha'ashiris. There's the test of poverty and there's the test of wealth. Shleim HaMelech says, Rosh V'Oishir Al Titanli. Don't make me poor and don't make me wealthy. He had both. <laughs> you got to be for what you ask for. What's the test of wealth? The test of wealth? You should know it. Be'ez <laughs> Rosham. Shem should help, and you should know, and I'm sure you'll pass it with flying colors. It's a different type of Nisayan. It's a different type of Nisayan. Huh? The Kapishna Tzerebbe was one sitting Shiva. The Kapishna Tzerebbe, the old Kapishna Tzerebbe. So the Lubavitch Rebbe came to see him for Nechim Avelim. They started to talk about this. So... Uh, so the Pakapishna Tzerebbe was on Fatsaita Tzerebbe, it was at Tzadik, he was, he was lamenting America, the American, you know, the luxury and the possibilities and the dreams and the, the country of prosperity where the streets are paved with gold and, and so forth. And the Lubavitch Tzerebbe said, Adirab, let Jews be successful and have money and they're able to do tremendous things with it and Torah will be able to grow. So he says, in many ways, poverty is, is better because the Nisoyinists are small. It's a different type of Nisoyin. It's not so much a Nisoyin that will uproot as an Ashama. It's a different Nisoyin. But the Nisoyin of Ashiris is very dangerous. You're not a mensch, and you lose your soul, and you lose your integrity, you lose your God. You become an a- arrogant person. You can often be a Ganav. So uh, they were going back and forth. So the Lubav Shabbat tells Kapitag Apishan Tzerebbe, he says, Yidin sein schon eus geprüft geworden mit den Assayen von Anias. Jetzt das Zeit, as they were just allowed to eus prüfen mit den Assayen von Ashiris. This is the late 1950s. It was the, you know, the, the generation right after the war trying to recover. But Jews started to build themselves up in America. It says, Hashem tested the Jews with, with poverty for many, many years now, many centuries now. It's time that he tests them with an Assayen of wealth. So the Kashyus Rebbe says, Shleim HaMelech says, Rosh V'Oshir al Titanli. First poverty, then wealth. That means wealth is even a bigger Nisoyen. So they were arguing. At some point, the Lubavitch Rebbe says, Kapishna Tzerebbe, Vos Arta Eichas, Yidin Zainer Haich. What do you care if Yidin are wealthy? Kapishna Tzerebbe was a Oye of Yisrael. He was a very Vadim Yid. So he says, Okay, Ich bemaskim zon Yidin Zainer Shinem. A maskim. Lubavitch Rebbe was very satisfied. He didn't want the Kapishna Tzerebbe should uh, oppose that Jews should be wealthy. You're right, listen. Every Indian could be a Nisoyan. But the truth is, and I'm talking now about the if, that even the Hester that comes in the form of a, what seems like a much bigger Hester, that there's no flow, the flow stopped. The flow stopped. So that's not a, that's not a mistake. That's just a bigger Hester. It's just a bigger concealment where the light is yet more concealed. Because the way, there's the way the light is concealed even in food. It's also divine energy. And in medicine, and in every herb, and in every vegetable, and really in every grain of sand, and in every chemical, and in every electrical current, there's the divine energy. It's coming through a physical avush, ain't a chanami. 
And it could be seen as a Hester. And you have to be Meyachet, Havaya Velikim. But sometimes the Hester is much more coarse and much more big. What do we mean the Hester? Prevents a person more from Torah, it would seem like. Prevents a person more from Tefillah. It obscures their relationship even more with themselves and with God. So this is just a Likim acting out, I don't want to say acting out, but a Likim, uh, a Likim that is, that is, that is, that, that represents, it's manifested in a much thicker and more dense lavush garment, which requires more courage, more effort, in order to be able to excavate and to mine it and to find the lakus at its core. Even in the privation, there is oil. Right. Right. Even in the privation, there is oil. Now, as you know, as in always with these things, it's easier said than done. You know, one could wax eloquently about it, often, but it's a whole other thing when it comes chalila. Uh, we say There's a reason for it. Uh, and you know, sometimes I said in another shir, things are inexplicable. It's not like you know everything becomes rosy and smooth. And an important message here is, and we mentioned this. When a person is is deprived from something, seeing Havaya in Elikim doesn't mean there's no Elikim. It means that there's a Yichud Havaya of Elikim. Yichud Havaya of Elikim doesn't mean Elikim doesn't exist. It just means it's one with Yudke Vavke. What that means is that the Levush does exist. person doesn't say, there's no herb, there's no food, I live from Moitza Pi Hashem, from the man, it was Lechem and Hashemayim. And even that came in the form of food. It was like lechem and arts, it was lechem and hashamayim. A person just understands that the lechem in her arts is also lechem and hashamayim. We learned the mime about lechem mishnah. You remember in Torah Erba Shalach, a murder the kamayim with lechem mishnah. The two wives with the two lechems is lechem and hashamayim, lechem and arts. And you have to be meyached. Really, havaya and alekib. The man, nobody had a question unless you were crazy where it came from. I mean, the Jews in the Midbar, after you have anything for 40 years, you can deceive yourself and say that it's, you know, somehow we found out there's some scientific theory that they gave. Dustin and Avira must have given some scientific theory how uh, mana falls down from heaven in that region. Uh, in that region. But, uh, but ostensibly, Lechem and Lechem and Aretz has to be combined. So it's not that there's no Lechem and Aretz. There's Lechem and Aretz, but it's really Lechem and Hashemayim. We have to remember... And this is a very subtle but important idea. Pain is also part of the marshal. I told you what Rabbi Moshe Shapiro told the younger man. You remember I said we spoke about this, yeah? There was a Rabbi Moshe Shapiro was from the big Bali Machshav in Eretz Yisrael, and there was a younger man by him. He was in the middle of a shear, and you know he knew what he he was going through difficulties, and he shared it. And he shared the pain and the confusion and the uncertainty and the difficulty. And he told them what seems like a simple insight, but it's not so simple. He said, right now, Hashem wants you to experience this type of turmoil, this type of pain. Sometimes people feel guilty for the fact that I'm in pain, I'm confused. I have anxiety, I have turmoil, I don't know what to do, I'm bewildered, it looks like my world is falling apart. And they tell themselves, if I would daven better, if I would learn better, if I would have a muna, if I would have betochen, then I wouldn't be feeling this. I would be mekabu yisurim ba'ava. I would know, Shem is good, guys are be'ad ha'chaitziv, Right? I get a lot of emails from people, enormous amounts of emails, and many of them, a person says, what can I read, what can I learn, what can I, could you send me a lecture, could you send me this, could you advise me, Who I could, that I should be able to get rid of this pain and just see the beautiful colors. We understand the desire of people to do that, but very often that's a, there's a mistake there. And the reason there's a mistake there is because emunah doesn't mean 
that it's not a painful situation. Emunah just means that the pain should not destroy you. You shouldn't see the pain as here just to destroy you and obliterate you and make your life miserable for all of eternity. I may not understand its purpose, I may not understand its meaning, but part of living with Yichud Hashem Elikim means, not that there's no Elikim, there is Elikim, not that there's no Hester, there's no Hester Be'emes, not that there's no pain, not that there's no difficulties, this is a reality that is very, very difficult, and therefore I have to be able to validate it. I have to be able to respect it. I have to be able to create space for it. And on the contrary, when a person does that, they can then ultimately see more the pnimius of it than the chitzainius of it. When a person feels that they're not allowed to have that type of pain, because it means they don't have a muna, so then, in addition to the challenge, they now have also the guilt that I'm not responding in the right way. Because if I was a real Jew, and I would know Kegars and Biyada Choytzev, then I would feel perfect. I would be dancing in the streets. When the Gemara says, Somebody sent me an email, well, how do you say this? It says, I said, I have a question. How could the Chazal contradict themselves? They should have said, Because it's good. You're obligated to thank God for good, like you're obligated to thank Him for good. Why do they call it raw? They, they, they believe that they believe, if they really believed it's Toiv, don't call it raw. They say, Well, you think is raw. And the point is, there's a reason there's a Mishnah Chayv Adam Levarach. Because it's. It's a reality that feels very, very disturbing. And a person may not be able to wrap their brains around and they can't go, snap your fingers, go up to a higher world and say, it's all beautiful. And if that's the case, then Tisha B'Av, we should be dancing like some chastair. Tisha B'Av and Purim should have been exactly the same day. Does it say that the pnimius of Tisha B'Av is Geula? It does say. We learned once, the Gemara says, when they came into the Heichel, they saw the Kruvim were intertwined with each other. The Bnei Yisoscha brings from the Mezut Shemagit, the Gemara says, in Yevam, Adam Before you go on a journey, you have to be together. Us, a couple should be together. So before the Rebbein Shalalim went on a journey, he had to be together with the Jewish people, so the Kruvim were intertwined. That means the moment of the Churban was also a moment of intimacy. And he impregnated Klal Yisrael at that moment with the seed of Mashiach. So when was the seed of Mashiach born? Yerushalmi says, Tisha Because the Kruvim were intertwined, which represents intimacy. It was the greatest moment of distance. It was also the greatest moment of intimacy. So if it's the greatest moment of intimacy, so it's Purim. It's Simchas But somebody who eats and drinks and dances on the Tisha he's over his Surim and Shulchan Aruch. And somebody who in the middle of Shiva or middle of Avelis, says, what Avelis? This Einoit Movadai. What Avelis? What, what Avelis? What Avelis? Now you have an ego. There's a you, and there's feelings, and there's pain, and there's relationships. Really? What happened? What happened to Hamuna? The same Torah that says Einoit Movadai says that at this moment, when Mashiach comes to Shabbat, will be a Yom Tov, will be the greatest Yom Tov. Because then you'll be able to see the complete oneness of Avaya and Elikim. But till that point, the fact that there's a struggle to be Miachad Avayev Elikim means the struggle is also part of Yichud Hashem Elikim. Yichud Hashem Elikim is not cute, holy, heavenly words. The struggle is also part of Yichud Hashem Elikim. God is in the struggle. And therefore, you don't have to cut that off from your life. You don't have to amputate that. It means. Sometimes you have a situation, a person is facing a situation with a child, a person is facing a situation with a spouse, a person is facing a situation with themselves. Different situations, small ones or big ones, very small or very big. And I told you I'm not in the business of comparing people's lives to each other. Whatever it is, I thought it's a toothache, and a toothache, right? <laughs> can drive you can drive you crazy. And even though in the global picture, my toothache or your toothache is not news that's fit to print. But for you, it's the only news that counts. 
<laughs> it shuts out all the other news because you have a toothache. I'm talking about the real toothaches, you know. And, uh, <laughs> the real toothaches. So, Machmashiga. Or sometimes it can be, you know, on Shabbos when that nail, half that nail comes off, you know that. Yeah. So, am I going to tell you that this is global news? That half my nail came off and I, I, all I want is just to pull it off? But for this person, it's very irritating. Now, there's much bigger things. A person faces these stuff. Don't allow your mental energy to be spent on trying to feel guilty <laughs> that you have that pain and trying to get rid of that pain by force. Eh, I don't have it. It's stupid. People say, I'm such a child. I'm such an idiot. If I, I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm a heretic. If I would be a, a normal person, if I would be a barseichel, I wouldn't feel this way. What are you doing? You're superficially and artificially amputating a part of yourself, but it's not authentic. It's not real. So it just gets repressed, and it comes out in many, many different ways, but not consciously, unconsciously. Furthermore, I make decisions that are all based not on what I need or want, but on, to re on reducing the pain. And because I'm not aware of the pain, I'm not aware what's motivating these decisions. Listen to what I'm telling you. It's very important. If you can acknowledge it, if you can see it, if you can identify it, and you could cry about it. This is this is a classic example of Shema Lakim. Of course I should make a Cheshman Anathash. And of course I should be better. But it doesn't mean it's not painful. And sometimes the pain persists. Sometimes the pain persists. Is there a level in life where people don't feel pain? Yeah. I told you the Maisa with the Belzeruv. Schusa Yogan Alein. I told you the Maisa with the Bzur Shavan Nepali. Yeah, yeah, there are such. There are three and a half people in a generation like that. Maybe two and a half people. Maybe four and a half people. When that becomes the standard and everybody feels guilty because they're not like that, it's, it, it creates neurosis for no reason. And sometimes I find people are more guilty for the fact that they're having pain than from the pain itself. They don't even allow themselves to mourn. They don't even allow themselves to experience what they're experiencing because the greatest pain is coming from the fact that I'm guilty over the fact that I have pain. But one second. Kabbalah Yisurim Ba'av, accepting pain with love, doesn't mean that it's not pain. It means recognizing that God is in the pain. And therefore, yeah, I have to, in a way, embrace it. This, this, this is where I am. This is where... I, and the more you can accept that, the more you can actually transcend it. Because you can give it its space. And now you're not making decisions that are unconsciously trying to take you away from it. Because you can acknowledge it. You could see it. You could feel it. You can validate it. And then you can make choices based on your values of what's the right thing to do right now. Kabbalah Yisurim Ba'ava means embracing all experiences and all parts of yourself as having some meaning to that. What the meaning is, I may not know, but if this is my reality, if this is my pain, there's a divine truth there. And I don't have to be ashamed to cry. I don't have to be ashamed to say, I'm zonked, I'm broken, I feel devastated. And the paradox is, when a person does that, they can actually find, ultimately, more meaning in it. Because they're giving it the dignity that it deserves. And they can ultimately be able to find the Havaya in the Alekim. Is there, there is. There is Havaya. But finding the meaning of Havaya is not by ignoring Alekim and saying, there's no Alekim, it's all beautiful, it's all wonderful. The sound can be valid. It has to be valid in all the streets. Probably absolutely worse pain as a person can experience physically the kidney stone attack. I I had it. When I had a kidney stone attack, they told me, the doctor told me that some people say that it's equal and some say it's worse to uh, to labor pains of childbirth. I never had that. And I, 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 I suggested it to a woman, and she got very insulted. Yeah. So, uh, but that's what a few doctors told me. No, what about that? So, 
I, yeah. All I did, I was just screaming. That's what I did. Huh? It happened to me four times. And that happens out of the blue. You can't speak about it. I know that. Of course not. Of course not. When a pain is happening, you can't speak about any of this. But it's also wrong to speak about this spiritually. Spiritually, it's wrong. A Jew who gets up to somebody who's having a kidney attack, yeah? Or chas v'shalom goes over to somebody at a levaya, they lost somebody close, and they say, by the way, it's really wonderful. And in fact, I'll show you a mimer. I'm going to teach you a mimer. The mimer says that Einoid Mulvadoi and Yichud Hashem Ve'elekim, right? Not only is, not only is this not, first of all, it's not menschlich, it's obnoxious, it's rude, but it's much more. It's so ungodly. It's so ungodly. It's so un. You, you strip God from humanity. It's the ultimate symptom. It's the ultimate separation where the human experience not only has no place, but it has to be denied, crushed. So basically, the entire realm of human emotion and human experience from God's perspective is completely worthless. The whole it's the antithesis of the whole Torah. The B'tselem Elikim Asa Adam. Or in these words, the Yichud Hashem Velikim. The Rambam says in Hilchis Mechira, he speaks about Oinas Dvarim. There's a lot of Oinas Dvarim means you're not allowed to fool somebody in business. You're also not allowed to hurt somebody through words. Like it says to tell a gayer. Oh, now Pesach Grace at or tell about Truva. What did you do yesterday? It's called Oinas Dvarim. It's a Sugim Baba Metzi in the Rambam in Hilchis Mechira. The Rambam brings over there from a Gemara Masech Baba Metziah. Somebody is suffering. You go over to somebody and you say, it's because you did this and this Aveda. He says, you violated a mitzvah loisus. Loisaino. It's an Aveda. He says, it's a sin to do. This person, it's a like, like Rambam and Hilchis Mechir from a Gemara Baba Metziah. This person is trying to be holy and making you holy. Comes over to you and says, you did an Aveda. And because you did this and this Aveda, that's why you're suffering. And the Rambam says, you just violated a Isur. For that price, you could have eaten chazer. <laughs> Pork, he's never going to eat. But he did the same thing. Why? Because he told the guides for this and this sin. Because what does that do? What does that do? It's a stab. So why did the Navi speak up? For example, Shalom. You have to speak up sometimes. Exactly. A person should always try to become better. We'll see soon. A person should always make a. But this does has nothing to do with invalidating pain. And a person who comes to the kidney stone guy and starts screaming "Einoid Mulvade," and therefore there's no kidney stone attack. First was a meshugana, or he's a malach. If you're a malach, there's no kidney stone attacks. Malachim also have kidney stone attacks, but they look different and they feel different. How does Malachim also work into the equation if somebody goes to someone and says you're suffering because you did it in Should his attitude be? Yeah. Well, there's a Gemara in there, Rabhuna, all of his wine became vinegar, right? So they came to visit him, and he wanted to know. He said, What do you think could be a reason? He asked them, and they told them. They told him. And he justified himself. And he justified himself. He said he didn't pay his workers. So they said, why didn't you pay the workers? He says, because they're a bunch of ganovim. <laughs> they steal for me anyway. Why should I pay? So they told him, Basar ganovim. Don't stoop down to their level. You don't become a thief because you're dealing with thieves. So And Abuna transformed himself. And then the Gemara says either two opinions, either the vinegar, right, went back to wine, or the price of vinegar went racket high. What's the two opinions in Gemara? Two types of tshuva. One is, one is, oh, one is it's not vinegar anymore, and one is doinus nasu like his The vinegar itself becomes gewaldic. <laughs> Who said vinegar is not good? Misham alechayim it's viadlik. Misham alechayim it's viadlik. Misham alechayim it's viadlik. It's two, two types of tshuva. One is you go away from the sin, and one is you transform the sin. You 
No, the Gemara says of a basra, Mishi Esh lechoyle betoich beisoy, yelech yitzel chacham v'yavakish alav rachem. To daven, to bab of daven, to daven. Right. A person can ask, a person could consult. But the point is, when a person is experiencing that pain, that physical space, there are people who have such moichen that are, you have. But, but two and a half people, I don't know, maybe three and a half people. <laughs> maybe there's a minion. I don't mean to say that there's no people like this. My point is when you start telling a person to, to, to dehumanize themselves, to delegitimize themselves, because God is everywhere, that's the antithesis of Yichud Hashem Alekim. To be Mafred Hashem Alekim is one of two extremes. It's going into Alekim and ignoring Havaya, but it's also running into Havaya and ignoring Alekim. That's also a period of Yichud Hashem Alekim. You understand? That's also a period. It's a different type. It seems very holy, but it's it's a sin. How do I know it's a sin? Not the Vanaviyu did it. The Miraglim did it. <laughs> These were holy people. There are sins. There are ugly sins and there are holy sins. But just because they're holy doesn't make them not sinful. A sin could be a holy sin. Be kroivaya kodesh. But it was the wrong thing. Because Moshele asked how you find meaning in it. The only thing personally I can think about oh. is what the author ever says in Tanya that the little bit of suffering in this world okay. equals the love. That's one in you? But even if a person, all, all the chashbainas, you learn Mesilas Yesharim and you learn Shari Truv and you learn Archis Sadikim and you learn Chavis Halavavis, yeah? And you learn Nefesh Achayim, huh? It's got to help. It's got to help, but let me tell you something. Okay, I'm going to tell you a little secret. When a person experiences real pain, yeah. all the information they learned is often out the window. I think you're telling two different people. I'm not talking about you. No. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about some people. Okay? Not because they don't think it's true, but because he's had a kidney stone attack. <laughs> that kidney stone somehow didn't learn Chavis Alavavis. I wish the kidney stone would have learned Chavis Alavavis and would have been a little more idle with me. But the kidney stone didn't learn Chavis Alavavis. <laughs> In the Litvish world, they say a miser there was a Valozhna Talmud who came to the Bichle Valozhna and he learned Reish's Chachma. Reish's Chachma is a very intense book of Musa. He describes Gehenna, it's a very intense. And he read it and he was having a, what do you call today, an OCD attack? Or uh, he was having an attack. So nervous. And the Bichle of Valozhna was a son of Rabchaim Valozhna. So he says, Daigenisht. The Eibushtadish Galeid Reishes Chachma. God didn't read that chapter of Reishes Chachma. <laughs> okay. He was just trying to calm down the guy. Don't worry. It's like it doesn't. He was trying to deal with Reishes Chachma. Is a holy book. Rebelio Dividash. My point is, what a person does is, is the book says I'm supposed to feel good. That's what it says in Mesilus Yishara. That's what it says in Shari Truva. Why, why am I such a bad person? So not only do I have a kidney stone attack, I'm, now I'm an evil person too for thinking that I have a kidney stone attack. Right? Because the book says, the book says, <laughs> that's true, the book says, but that book, you're misapplying it. Because the fact that right now this person is going through pain, that's a very real thing. And a person could, could look at it, could cry, could accept it, can validate it, can make space for it. And space for it does not mean that the person is an unholy person. It's on the contrary. Right now, this is their experience. This is a very real experience. And in that sense, it's even a precious experience. You don't have to remove it. You don't have to eliminate it. And when a person does that, you'll see paradoxically, the pain can actually go away. Because it's not repressed. When it's repressed, it won't go away. It'll come out through leaks. You understand what I'm saying? When you suppress an illness, when you suppress an infection, you didn't get rid of it. By putting a Band-Aid on a wound, 
I never heard a doctor say, just let's cover it up. <laughs> it do- covering up doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Telling myself, I shouldn't be like this. Okay, you shouldn't. But you are. But you are. <laughs> what you're saying is part of the way this chapter. That's part of the way. That's, that's also the way this session. Thank you. So, hey, uh, uh, Isaac. Yes, it's almost like a saying that somebody has pain instead of proving the guilt, saying that like, it's the opposite, that because he did something good for the family, God is not feeling Listen, if I could become better, I should try to become better. And if there's something to fix, I should fix. And if I hurt somebody, I should ask them forgiveness. And every good thing a person does brings more light into their life and into the world. There's no question. While you're in pain, you can think like But the pain is is a real pain. It, it, let's call, it's my real pain. If I would be maybe in a different state of consciousness, fine. A person gets up to Davin because he hasn't been hungry. Rebzusha of Anapoli didn't have food. Yeah, They used to say that when he was hungry, he would go out and say, Thank you for giving me such an appetite. <laughs> How did he see his hunger? Wow, I have an appetite. What a special thing. But when I'm hungry, I don't feel that way. I don't say thank you for giving me an appetite. I'm like, a little food would be nice. I'm not... A, with, Yes, we're not on a level of Havaya pre Elikim. We're Havaya post Elikim, with Elikim. Elikim means there's various experiences of life that are disturbing, that are concealing. They conceal God's goodness, they conceal God's light. Is God's light dear? Yes, but it's cloaked in darkness. Im esak shamayim shamoto, vatsiya shaoili neko. Dovid Amalek says, if I go to heaven, you're there. But what if I go to the abyss? What do you mean abyss? Where's there an abyss? Where's the shoil? He necker, you're there. A kidney stone is very, very painful. I had it. <laughs> I'm laughing now. I wasn't laughing then. I thought I'm dying. I didn't know. I'd never had it before. I got it in the middle of the night. I thought I'm dying. My wife also thought I'm dying. And I was stuck in Vermont somewhere. Here, you have a tzala comes in three and a half minutes, two and a half minutes. I was talking about, they said, yeah, we can send an amb- ambulance in a few hours. I'm like, a few hours? You said the have a condition, don't send me an ambulance. I, I didn't make that joke, trust me. <laughs> What's there to do? There was nothing to do. It's just, uh, if you have morphine, you take morphine. I didn't have morphine. <laughs> Maybe you could pull out the mimer. I, I, I can't pull out a mimer then. You ever stubbed your finger in a door? You could pull out my marim? Were there other people who could? Perhaps. And they're great people. So, someone who sits in a lot of these cheerium, someone who learns a lot of the Buddhist no. someone who... Yes. Then they have a storehouse. So when they have the kidney stone, maybe they're able to deal with it a little bit better than if they hadn't done that. Maybe you. I learned a lot of svarim. I was zoichet to learn a lot of svarim. And when I had my kidney stone attack. So then what's the use of learning then about uh, all this stuff? That it's the been? use of learning is to know what I'm telling you now. That you don't have to invalidate people's pain, ever. It doesn't mean you're getting closer to God. It's the other way around. In a way, it's distancing one from God. Because it means that the pain, somehow God is not here. Where did Hashem show up to Moshe? In the sne. Rashi says, why? You remember why? In a thorn bush. I'm in the pain too. And that doesn't mean that the pain is beautiful. It means that there's, that there's something here. Don't run away from it. Well, if someone has this understanding, it makes the pain easier to bear. Fine. Perhaps. Or the Shemayim is easier to bear. Perhaps. 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 Huh? Listen, it's not it's not an argument. It's really about where a person is. If 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 a person is coming and crying, this happened to me, this happened to my marriage, this happened to my child. For me to tell this person, 
it's not so bad. All it's all Hashem. It's all good. Why are you crying? Why can't you do it? It's not right. Not only it's not going to work, it's also not right. I can give them a hug. I could say, I'm here for you. I'm sorry. And paradoxically, that helps more than anything else. Saying, eh, it's nothing, you'll get over it. <laughs> I was sitting at a shiva, somebody lost a child. I don't know where people say chalas. One after another, people were sitting and giving him speeches, giving his father speeches. Chizuk, they called it. At some point, I give credit to the guy who was listening. He turns to this person who said, I, I want to tell you a story. And he started telling a story. This person turns to him and says, listen, I have sat Shiva five times. Parents, his wife died very young. Child, sibling, all not, un a lot of untimely deaths. He said, <laughs> I heard all these stories. Please don't share it with me. So this guy turns around to me and says, Rabbi Jacobson, I'll tell you the story. I said, you came to visit me? We came to visit him. He says, no, no, but it's a beautiful story. I said, excuse me. This time is for your stories? This is not a time for stories. I said, it's much more appropriate to be quiet. If nothing to say, just be quiet. Just show up. It's this feeling I have to... Uh, manicure, what's the word? I have to manipulate every emotion that it should be holy. The worst thing you could do for holiness is to manipulate your emotions to be holy. You know why? You become a dishonest person. You understand? I'm going to manipulate. I'm going to manipulate. I'll tell you, they manipulate. I'm going to manipulate. So I should be holy. I don't have Taivas Achila. I have no Taivas Achila, as you know. Well, I, nah, I don't really have. If I would just learn another, I want to have. I don't have Taivas Neof. Me, never. When we come to Sumer, I'm a good Jew, I'm a Ben Taira. I don't have these doubts. I don't have such things. One of the most central ideas of Tanya is that God didn't want people to be perfect. <laughs> I have a temptation, he's there too. You don't have to get depressed over it. Who says avoid Hashem means that you have no temptations? It means you have a temptation. And there's a light there too. There's a shlich is there too. He read the, the expression in Tanya Perik of Zion about people who struggle with a lot of addictions and cravings. And he says, Ulay lekach nevra. Maybe you were created for this for this. Maybe you were created for this fight. There's a famous there's a famous painting it's called the Scream. A famous what? A famous painting. painting. It's called the, the scream. Because I was hearing what, what you were saying earlier about what happened, and sometimes that uh, is the only hands, yeah. response that a person can do. Yeah. Because not, you know, the phone is not there. You should always have good health. Amen. 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 When a shem punishes somebody, he's in that name too. Yeah. Goes with Shrayan. Yeah. Imaya noichi betzara. The Yisoyde, one of the Yisoydas of Yiddishkeit, Hashem is always in the pain. I may not see him, which is what makes it painful. If I would see him in the pain, and I would see the full meaning and purpose, it's not so painful. That takes a lot of hachana to get to that. That's part of the Hester. That's part of the Hester. Vanoichi haster aster. I will conceal myself. So the Baal Shem Tov says, the Anoichi is also haster aster. The Anoichi is in the Hester. They have the song, you know, from Afilu uh, Bahastura, right? How does it go, Afilu? Betoy Hastura. When a person is Meyachid, Havayan Elikim, what does that mean? It means that the person appreciates and truly internalizes in a Pnimius. The idea that there's no true Hester, an ultimate Hester, knowing therefore that the intermediaries, Malachim, Azalus, Levushim, everything, 
are nothing on their own, but only what he calls shluche hashefa. Shluche hashefa means passageways <clears throat> through which the shefa, through which the flow comes through. It's literally like the axe in the hand of the wielder. So he says, gam hadvarim hagashma. We're not talking only malachim and mazalis in a higher realm, but also all physical matters, material matters. Heim They are vessels, receptacles, containers, channels, shabahem nislabesh ha in which the koyach the divine, the godly koyach, energy, chiyos, vitality, is enclosed. They are essentially levushim, garments. Umemela. The result of this is one does not see them and recognize them as the primary essence, as the key issue. What's really relevant is, what's the ikir is, what is contained, what is being channeled through them, and what is being channeled at the kayach Ulazais, the result practically is Yisamitz v'yishtadel shatia keli ruuya lekabel eir alaki. So then the person's focus is: I want my vessels, I want my kalim, and that means everything in the world comes through kalim, everything. And when you want to receive gashmias, it's through a keli of gashmias, because the energy is now being translated into gashmi. But I want that the keli should be roi. Roi means it should be worthy, it should be suitable to receive an oil of I want it to be a clean, a keli that's that's consistent, that can be synchronized with the oil. The oil and the keli should work together. So therefore, it means that a person doesn't get involved with in sly, shrewd tricks and schemes which what it does is it tarnishes the keli. Or excessiveness. means it's non-stop, it's completely overwhelming and excessive, which again, it takes over the whole person. There's no relationship with the ikir, with the primias. And that the kalim should not stress out and overwhelm and confuse and flood the person. The sign is, if it completely stops the person, there's no space in his mind for Torah, no space for Tefillah, no space for Avayda. All of Avayda is Hashem. And this includes not just the, 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 the technically the time he learns, the times of David, but a, focus, a life that's focused on avoida, on self-enhancement, on self-growth, on a relationship with that which you have to have a relationship with, this means that I don't see it as a keli anymore. I actually come to worship it. I see that this is it. So therefore, if I'm not going to do this trick, it won't happen. So I'm losing perspective of the truth of yichud, havaya velakim. And this can translate into millions of different ways how it applies in every person's life. But this is the principle that then one, need, one needs to apply in the individual lives. Especially, it's, a person could say, very nice, all nice title. Which world are you living in? It's very nice, you sit in the base manager and you preach this. But there's, there's a real world out there. You go, tell, go tell this to everybody else. And go preach this at Madison Avenue and then 2nd Avenue and 5th Avenue. Go preach this in Wall Street. Very nice. In, in, in a world of idealism and in a world of Gan Eden, yeah. So he says that's a mistake. Hadvarim it's ad atzman. Again, it's, a, it's, it's, it's being, it's surrendering it's being deceived by the external. The things on their own, because they're really kalim. Essentially, if you understand the muhuz, it's not really there to stop. It can't really stop and prevent 
Avoidus Hashem. This is a perception. It's a choice a person makes. Because that's the whole Nekuda. That there's never anything that is a true hell and vaster. It may be perceived that way, interpreted that way, but there's nothing that is really a helm, really a concealment on your relationship, on your connection right now. Chas v'shalom, kanis k'mashin is bo'er le'el bo'erich. Shekolam ha'mutsoyim adirabe, meviyim esarev ha'shaf. Every nekuda that comes from Shema Lekim is not there to hold back the light. It's there to bring it down, to transport it to this particular realm, as explained at length with all the mashal. Ve'echi yelay l'mani yavikam l'avayda salakos. So to say that this thing essentially is the thing that blocks me for avoid and for relationship with Hashem, that's a misinterpretation of reality. Rak, shehu b'pchisus daita. The person is looking at it from a more primitive place. Pchisus daita means the das, my awareness is trapped. My awareness imposes this interpretation of reality. I'm not reading it right. I'm not reading it right. We sometimes become addicted to the externals, to the what it, to the chitzonius of it. So therefore, he forgets the true muhus of everything, which is alakus havai. So now suddenly he considers the material itself as the main metzius, as the main entity, and he gives himself up to them. He gives up his soul, his consciousness, he gives himself up. And then take, they stop him. But if a person remains focused, his das, his perception, and his heart remain focused on the truth of Achdus Hashem, Truth of Hashem means the truth of one is that Havaya and Elikim are Kulachat and everything in the world is Kigarzin Biyadachoytzev. It's the axe in the hand of the wielder, the sickle in the hand of the one who waves it. As Moshe Rabbeinu says, that Hu Levada, he himself is the one who gives you Koyach strength, Lasus Chayel. To generate chayil, chayil means strength, valor, revenue, power. Bechol amamutsoyim and all the intermediaries, which are there, they're there. As we said, in that which you will do. So on one hand we say he will bless you, but he will bless you with what? He will bless you in that which you do. So with Mela, I have to go do. That's called Maisa. But all of these intermediaries, hey Mirak, the way you have to understand them is only shayadam over hashef. It's through which the chanted shefa gets channeled, but never ever as a blockage, and as a stir and as a contradiction that avaya is not here kavayachal, and it's just they run the show. It's exactly as an axe beyada chaytzev, and therefore who do you attribute everything that's happening with the garzin? Not to the garzin. You don't say thank you axe. I'm insulted with you, I'm firing you, I'm honoring you, I'm decorating you, I'm going to impress you. You thank the person. I, what do you mean, what's the person without an axe garnish with your bare hands, what are you going to do? But the axe, it's whole metzius, is just a tool. The same is true with everything and every experience and every encounter and all involvements in life, down to the piece of bread that the person is eating. is also kikars of biyad it's nutritious value, down to the business or the work the person is involved in or whatever they're developing, which is generating basically Hashem an income, a nice income, a beautiful income, an exact, tremendous income. And all of this is Kigarzin Biyada Chaitzev. So it's a Mamutza. It happens it comes through this, it comes through this, the Shefa comes to it, but Avalaikiru Elakos. Us, then, the person will never have a real maineya, something that prevents him and stops him, not internally and not externally. The person remains completely connected with truth, with godliness. This doesn't mean the person should quit doing work. 
It says, Uberachin Chashem Malakecha, Bechoyel Asher Tasa. In other words, as he puts it, Tzorich Lavrida Yedei Asiya. Just like to get from the higher world to the next world, it has to go through a different Kalim. Because if it doesn't go through those Kalim, it can't manifest in a new tzir, because the oir is too intense for it. Just like the teacher teaching the student who's very remote needs to take the idea and say, you know what, it's not brought down enough. We have to bring it down yet a notch lower. The divine shefa that translates into physical results, material results, needs to go through various kalim, which basically coarsens, it concretizes the energy from a more transcendent place into a more concrete place. But those kalim are not, are not uh, they're the transmitters, they're the levusha, they're the channels. But it's again, you guys are the chaitzav. So the the involvement is bechitzayni yisharatza. Chitzayni yisharatza means I want to do it, but it's not my whole, it doesn't capture my essence. It doesn't, you could be involved in something, but it doesn't capture your soul. You're not kidnapped by it. You're not abducted by it. You still always remain connected to a core. You take the keli seriously because it's a serious keli, but you take it seriously as a keli, not as a, not as a god, not as a deity. You take it seriously as a keli. It's a lavush, the garzin. You need a good garzin. If the garzin is broken, it's not good. You're using a hammer. The hammer has to be good. You have to have a handle and you have to have an axe, and it has to be good. No question. And sometimes you have to work on that. The garrison is broken, you know. It's not a mitzvah to come into an office and have it dysfunctional. Nobody knows what they're doing, and it's just uh, one big nice malava malka, what they call. Uh, and even a malava malka should be organized. <laughs> so sometimes I have to fix up the garrison. Uh, you got to sharpen the saw, yeah? The shaykhet, uh, the shaykhet got to sharpen the chalav. Because these are kalim, and the keli has to be a keli master, whatever you, whatever you need the keli for. Just like the food needs to be lechem or whatever food could they buy in order it should be able to provide the nutrition that the body needs. The mistake happens is when the garrison becomes confused with the chaytzev, the axe becomes like the wielder. For us and them, yishalem b'ashem Person remains wholesome. Emotionally, internally wholesome in his connection with Hashem, with his Torah, and with Avodah. When a person separates between Avaya and Alekim, what do we mean he separates? What says he separates? It's not really separated. Behind in his perception, Hashem Alekim master, Alekim really eclipses Shem Avaya. Now, this person doesn't put it in these oasis. If you're already putting it in these oasis, the Shemashtikal Madrege. Person wakes up and says, By the way, I think Alakim and Avaya don't mamish work together. This is already, uh, he's already uh, considering these realities. The Rebbe here is describing the Shoirish of it. person usually is not going into his bonus, Avaya, Alakim. It's, it's yes together, it's not together. It means his life is one that lives out the perception that Shem Avai and Shem Alakim are two separate realities. It's how I live. What Shechoshev, that Shem Alakim master be'emes chas v'shalom al Shem Avai. In other words, I really believe that Shem Alakim is a true Hester. It's not just a Hester in order to be Megala. We know that it's a Hester. If it wouldn't be a Hester, it wouldn't serve a purpose. <laughs> if it wouldn't serve a purpose. It's a Hester in order to be able to access the Oyer in Geshem. Since I'm an Hashemah in Guf, I can't be Mechabal Achius of Elikius. Only through spiritual channels like in Gan Eden, where there's no food, there's no drinks. You can get spiritual nutrition and it works. It would be a wonderful thing if a person could do that in that world, but it's contrary to the whole Kavana of this world. So therefore, the Ur must go through the Vushim of what we call Teva, or we call it Elikim. And it looks like, sometimes, that Teva runs it. Here a person needs a doctor, and here a person needs a lawyer, and here a person needs an accountant, and here a person needs a consultant, and here a person has to work hard, and here a person has to employ skills or learn skills in this area or that area. Every Tchum of work, according to the disciplines 
and wisdom that is available to us. And if I ignore that, what am I ignoring? I'm ignoring the garrison that's needed for this type of work. I can't use a hammer when I need a drill and an axe when I need a hammer. And I can't confuse a hammer with a nail. And can't use a wrench when I need a scissor, etc. This is different kalim that are masim in order to be able to achieve, so to speak, this shefa. That's that's the emes of it. When the person separates havaya and elikim and really believes that there's a true hester, be emes Hashem havaya. It's not just a hester in order to access the earth and a hester through which you can ultimately reach everything, as explained. The marshal which brings you back to the nimsh, but it's a real hester. And everything in the world, and in his world, is basically a result of a lakim completely on its own. Now what happens? All the intermediaries become the primary issue in life. Why? For good reason. If you're not nice to the axe, you're not getting anything. So now you got to spend your life flattering and appeasing your acts. That's how it works. Without that, this is Ike Chayusa. You want to live? You want to be successful? This is what you got to do. This is the essence of what the Pasuk says. The Navi laments that there's a philosophy. Hashem let go of the earth. Because it doesn't mean atheism is no God. It just means that God is too big for the earth. The only person is saying, when it comes to Eretz, when it comes to the real world, when it comes to heaven, yeah, over there, in Shulim Beis Medrash, by the Tish, by the Shir, in Kippur, in Shoshana, by Neila, by Musaf, by Avoido, by his, his daughter's Chupa, then mm-hmm. uh, it's amazing. But in the real world, in the real world, this is where the sharks, this is where the alligators hang out. This is where the crocodiles are waiting for a meal. Here you got to know that it's a whole different world. Hashpa lamata. The way the hashpa is down here, you want to be successful in the real world. This, you have to understand the forces that govern it. Those are the forces that govern it. Nimshucha me'amazolus shehim amashpiyim b'kayach atzma. So one person worships Mazalas. Mazalas are basically, the, we said, the heavenly constellations. The whole discipline of astrology. Some people, astrology is everything. There are astrological signs. You were born in Gemini. Now I know everything about you. Tell me your wife. I'll tell you all the problems in the marriage. And the... Now what, here again, it's not that there's no Mazalas. Of course there are Mazalas. And it's not that Mazalas don't represent anything. It means the mazalas are kegars and beyada chaitzev. Don't get trapped by any force. Don't get trapped by any keli. The kelim have meaning. The kelim have significance. They tell a certain story. But the person decides it's all the mazalas. Sheva mashpiyim bekayach atzmam. Vareya mechashev oisam ladavar ma. So now they have unique significance. Meyacha sheva mashpiyim lechiyusei. Ume meila mechashev gamkenes advarim agashvam atzmam lasig ben bechol koychiv yichod v'kolabis parnasos. Now the person has to also look at the material things that are connected to the mazalus, and they become tremendously significant, so he puts in his whole koyach, his whole energy, his whole koyach, his whole potential, all his capabilities, in order to increase, increase the revenue. The zeu inyan, this is the concept, and he says clearly, the zeu inyan, the zeu inyan, this is the theme, this is the source of the concept of Avay What's Avay Sha'ive, the word Avaidazara means alien service. You'll see throughout Shas and Halacha, there's an expression akum. That's the regular expression. Oivet Kaychavim Umazalas, right? Ayin Chavav Mem Oivet Kaychavim Umazalas. What is Oivet? You worship stars and constellations. Constellations are every month. Every month you could see in the landscape. In astronomy, you could see groups of stars that represent a certain form. The month of Nisan is Tle, which is the sheep. The month of Iyer is uh, is Shoir, May, which is Shoir, which is uh, the bull. And then you have Sivan, is Toomim, Gemini, and, and Sartan, Cancer, etc., etc. Throughout all Tle, Shoir, Toomim, Sartan, Aryeh, Psulim, Isnayim, Akrov. 
Kesha's Gdli Dog of the 12 Mazolas. And they're, they're based on astronomical facts of what you could see in the backdrop of the sun, that the groups of stars are, are, were grouped together and, and, and man, many, many thousands of years ago, the Ramadan says, and gave it names based on the image of those stars. It looked like a sheep, it looked like a scale, it looked like a virgin, it looked like fish, it looked like a scorpion, etc. So when you speak about the Oivet Kechavim and Mazolas, it means he worships the stars and he worships the Mazolas. What's the difference? What makes it, what, what makes it, what makes, why do we call it worshipping, Avoid? So he says, Again, you lose focus that it's, guys, do stars have significance? Of course. What is their significance? It's the divine energy that comes through it, that is represented through it. It tells a story. But what story does it tell? It doesn't tell its own story. What's the difference of a person who uses it or a person who worships it? Excellent question. What's the difference between a person who uses it and a person who worships it? I'm not so familiar with the Chachmas HaMazolus, but I hear a lot from people who are very into it, and they build their lives on it. Sometimes it can maybe be useful for a person to maybe understand a certain struggle or a certain weakness or a certain trait or a certain character issue, right? It can be useful. It can be very useful. Fire, earth, air, and water. Fire, air, earth, earth, water. Like, you know, all the personality type studies and so forth. So maybe you know what's, what's difficult for you, what you're good on. So what it helps you do is it helps you put focus on... on on what you should put focus. For example, if I know something is very, very difficult for me and challenging, I don't have to get frustrated everything that happens. I know, yeah, this may be a challenge for me. So maybe I can avoid it more, or maybe I need a way of looking at it. When a person expects certain things to come easy and they don't, you get angry and frustrated. What if I can accept for some things, for some people, some things are very easy, and for me they're very challenging, and conversely, everyone knows, everyone sitting in this room knows, there are certain things that for you are... Easy, very smooth, but other things that are challenging. And other people, it's the exact opposite. You know, some people, uh, just to give a simple example, some people, um, I was just talking to somebody, they love a social life. Yeah, if they would ask, they would ask them, you have a choice one evening, you could stay home on the couch and read a book, a good book, or listen to a sheer. You could be with yourself and your thoughts and your feelings and whatever. Or you could go uh, to a social scene. Yeah? <laughs> what would you choose? Yeah? Some people, it's not a Shiloh one way. Some people, it's not a Shiloh the other way. For one person, it's Ganeid. One person, is Gehenna. Of course, he's going to run to one of them. He's sit at home and do nothing. But, and for the other person, every time he has to go to an event, is like Ibn Lebanish. He has to go to therapy for a week afterwards. Do me a favor. I don't want to meet. I don't want to see. So it, these are not things you could snap your finger and change. It's, you have to be able to identify, and you also have to be able to respect it. So those are things, huh? You use it, yeah. So, for example, Nancy Reagan had a professional astronomer. Yes, yes, I remember, Nancy yeah. Reagan. So is that just a weather report, or is that an odd thing? I don't know, I never spoke to Nancy Reagan about her astrological connections. But they used to make fun of it. The, the left, the left would love to say that Reagan decides the policy of America based on astrology. Like a therapist. Just like they determined when to come to right. Europe based on the weather report in northern years. I'm asking, all the, oh, if you're not subject to it, right. but it's a definition of an Agnes, if Nancy, for example, worshipped it, right. if she would try to predict the events, right. that would be an Agnes, right. correct? Yes, yes. So you understand? It's Kegayz and Biyad HaChaitzev. This will explain a Peladik Gemara. The Gemara says, famous Gemara, Yisrael Shabachutz Loritz, Oiv Dei Avoy Dezare Betarehe. That's what our sages tell us. Jews living outside of Eretz Yisrael worship Avoy Dezare with purity. Now, for Chazal to employ such a term that Yisrael Sheba Chutzlar, it's Oyvdi Avoy Dezara Betarehe, begs an explanation. They didn't say Oyvdi Avoy Dezara in Chasrut. They said Oyvdi Avoy Dezara Betarehe. Tara means with Tara, with Kedusha, with purity. 
But really, this captures the whole Nakuda that we're learning. Why? At this time, Tafresh Nun Zayin, 1897, there were very, very few Yidin in Eretz Yisrael. Today, Baruch Hashem is not so. In Eretz Yisrael, you have close to 7 million Jews. I think half of the Jewish people, Ken Yerbu, live in Eretz Yisrael. But, uh, but when the Gemara was written, when this Maimah Chazal was written, it wasn't this way. In this era, it certainly wasn't this way. Rav Yisrael in the Chutzlars. Most Jews are in Chutzlars. And you can add what he means, not just a fact. They all decided to migrate from Eretz Yisrael. <laughs> this was the reality imposed on them. They were exiled to Chutzlars. They lived in Chutzlars. They didn't always have the freedom and the ability, at least not easily, to be able just to pick up and go to Eretz Yisrael. So how could the Chazal make such a psak din and say most of Klal Yisrael are oiv de'avid Such a statement is shocking, astounding. who the pshat is, you have to look at the word tara. Kashem shavoy de'zare begashmi so what is avoy de'zare physically? Practical, what is halachik avoy de'zare? And hilchis avoy de'zare. What does a person do? First thing is, koifif roishoy. You bend your head. You bow down. In ancient history, in pagan history, there were many, many gods that you had to worship. There's the god of the sea, and the god of the sun, and the god of the moon, and the god of the weather, and the god of the fish, and the god of the animals, and the god of the lightning, and the god of the thunder. Every force was a god. And the gods were seen as competing with each other. And the gods had power. When the Nile became blood, basically it meant that there was another god who got angry at Egypt and decided to punish Egypt's god. That's how they interpreted reality. It's basically a bunch of CEOs running the world. This is really how they saw it. And therefore the Eitzel was, you had to push it, bribe the CEOs. So you had to sacrifice, you had to worship, you had to show favor, because if this god was angry at you, right... And he's having a good day. He went to the gym that morning. That may be the end of you. So therefore, there was this whole philosophy. It's hard for us to understand. But all the makas were basically Moshe giving Pari a shear in changing his perspective of reality. Everything had a god. Every force is basically another god. The gods are very, very self-centered and want to take care of themselves, just like big tycoons. And you got to make sure that you have them on your side. And when you see a God who's very powerful and has control in your domain, you better, you better be on his side. And Pari himself considered himself a demigod or deluded himself into being a demigod, which means some type of God. So the first step is Kaifif Roshe, which till today, when you prostrate yourself, what does it mean? It means a demonstration of tremendous recognition, right? especially in Eastern cultures and different cultures in America that are not so into it. But a king, a queen, right? you bow down. The bow down represents a certain surrender, submission, respect, validation of the throne, and my uh, at least formal subservience to you, at least in this setting, whether it's serious or not serious. So, and they did this to the sun, they did this to the moon, different types of stars and planets and galaxies, etc., why do you bend down your head? Why do you bow? There was a reason for this. They didn't worship the sun for no reason. They worshipped the sun. They worshipped the Nile. They worshipped the moon because they felt these are the gods responsible. The Nile flooded Egypt every August. It brought them life and civilization. Without it, they would be they would live in a parched, they live in a parched desert, they wouldn't be able to function, they certainly would have no vegetation and produce and no drinking water. So this is the God, the Nile, they, as Rashi says, they worship the Nile. <laughs> this is where you're living from. So we look at it, what, what are you worshipping? It's, 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 it's a river. It's a river. Figure out the mechanics of nature. <laughs> this is the scientific revolution. But the scientific revolution, people don't realize, began with Avramovin. The first scientist in history was Avramovin. He wasn't only the first monotheist, he was also the first scientist. He was the one who said, Hevre, relax, there's a system here. There's a system of nature and everything is connected. 
Sometimes the sun has its own god, and the moon has its own god, and the wind has its own god, and snow has a god, and rain has a god, and and <coughs> and hail has a god, and thunderstorms have a god, and hurricanes have a god, tsunamis have a god, the earth has its god, trees have their god. The ability to be able to see a unified system here, and a mechanical system that works according to laws, and they are responding to it, in order to be able to recognize deeper forces that are at play. But they said, this is my mucker of Ashpa, so mainly you bow. Commercial cost of the puzzle is me megat for shemesh, me megat gerish yerachim, Moshe says. From the sweetness, from the sun, you get the sweetness of the grain. From the moon, you get the sweetness of various uh, stalks of barley. The kaniska, Moshe says, bayolel, shehen mamutzayim. And there's a reason for it. The sun is a classic mamutza. What would we do without the sun? The sun is responsible for life. How could you live without the sun? No warmth, no light, no growth, no sunlight. What would the earth look like without the sun? And the sun is positioned, and the earth is positioned in perfect proximity. If it was closer to the sun, we would look like toast. And if it was further from the sun, we could freeze. So these are mimutsayim. Omnam, the truth is, heim rake garzim it's the axe in the hand of the wielder. Mm-hmm. The Yisoyed of Avodah Zarah, the Rambam explains this at length in Hilchas Avodah Zarah, Perik Aleph. The Rambam says, this Nekuda, that the problem was that they knew that there was a source. But they said that these things all have significance. It's like a king hires ministers and advisors and consultants and people who are in charge you don't always go to the president to get the job done. There's a whole system. And they have choices. And therefore, you should be, you should be close to them. Because if you're close to them, you could, uh, you could gain what you want. Now let's talk about spiritually. What is it? I'm not bowing my head physically to a statue, but it's something else. When a person considers all material things that are connected to the sun and the moon and the mazolas, because everything is connected up there, and you believe that this is the true source of Parnassa, just like when you bow down physically, you bend down your head, you prostrate yourself. What does it mean? I may not physically bend down my head, but it's the same concept. The person bends, the person surrenders, the person gets submits himself. He subjugates himself to the systems that he thinks are completely responsible for his livelihood. person dedicates his whole mind and heart to his business and physical things and he becomes doyeg. Doyeg means he's filled with anxiety. There's anxiety and turmoil in him. And therefore he's doing tricks in his business because I want to make money. What happens and he forgets. It's insomnia. He forgets. His divine consciousness becomes compromised. He loses the focus. He loses his dveikas. He loses his oneness with the true source, with the essence of everything. And if he loses which is not a good thing, that's why he says Chas Hashem He won't attribute it to his relationship with Hashem. He won't attribute it to that. What he's going to say, Kiim if he's going to think, I did this and this, that's why I lost the money. His entire focus will be on the Garzan, never on the Chaitzaf. By him the Iker is the Gashmi and that's what he thinks about with many tricks. Day and night he will not relax. This becomes his obsession. Becomes his obsession. 
Somebody once said, what's the definition of a fanatic? A fanatic is, you can't change his mind, and he refuses to change the subject. So this is, he won't rest. He refuses to change the subject. Comes to davening, this is all he's thinking about. His mind goes right there. It's not in physicality. He's not worshipping everything and bringing a carbon to it and bowing down to it. But it's a mental space of Avayda Zara. What well, says the mental space of Avayda Zara? That the person surrenders his soul, his mind, his heart, his personality, his consciousness to this particular person or to this particular business or to this particular issue. Again, not that they're not Kalim. The sun and the moon, we pray, we say every day. Halu bam roimim, halalu shemesh, v'yareach. We appreciate the sun. We appreciate the moon. We appreciate the stars. We appreciate the mazalas. And you got to appreciate your boss or your employees or your colleagues or your investors or your partners. Of course you have to appreciate it. As what? As a garzim biyad ha-choytzev. Yisrael shebechutzlar. It's what happens on a person. Avedizar in ruchnius means I lose myself. I lose my head in the process. I prostrate myself to this system, and now I'm completely defined by it. Instead of me defining it, it defines me. So when a person is successful, he worships it. And when a person loses, he also worships it. Instead of understanding the MS, instead of looking and saying, yeah, the Gaizen, if you have to fix something in the Gaizen, you should fix something in the Gaizen. But the Iker is the Chaitziv. The person that focuses on the guys and instead of, so he, he says when he loses Chazom, he doesn't remember Hashem who did this, maybe of maybe because of certain actions, so I could fix my actions. He doesn't see that anymore. And because he doesn't see that anymore, he loses this focus. That's why they said Betar with purity. I know. What they meant is that in Chutzlaretz, it was very common to get so endure, immersed in various business opportunities with so many tricks to the point that a person thinks it's his own Kayach. The Chazal were actually trying to show the good, the, the, the positivity here. What do you want? They live in Chutzlaretz. The Bechutzlaretz, Nimshe Cha'oyra de Islapshus Levush Asiyah Shu Levush Gasmoyed. The Levushim of Teva and Eretz Yisrael are different than Chutzlaretz. Of course, Eretz Yisrael is also Levushim. The man doesn't come down in Eretz Yisrael today. But in Eretz Yisrael, even in Galos, because of the holiness of Eretz Yisrael, the lifestyle is different. People often who move from Eretz Yisrael here, it's a very hard adjustment. And they sometimes blame it on themselves or on the community, on the culture. It's not. It's a whole different mahalach. Eretz Yisrael and Chutz are two worlds. It's a different world. Even the way it translates into business, into money, into insurance, into different things. Now, this doesn't mean that the government, that the, the, this doesn't mean that people don't affect the cultures and so forth. <laughs> But it means that after everything said and done, the Levushim and Eretz Yisrael, he says, are not so gasim. In Chutzlar, it's everything comes through his Lapshus Levush, Asiyashu Levush Gasma, in a very thick Levush. In Chutzlar, it's harder to be able to perceive the Ur in the Levush. So, Amelia Yisrael Shabbat Chutzlar, what do you want? In Chutzlar, it's very easy to fall and get stuck in the externalities rather than in the Pneumius. This is Eritrean and Chutzlar, it's not, not Golos? Of course, Golos adds a whole other dimension to it. But here we're talking about the difference of Eritrean and Chutzlar. There's a certain energy, there's a certain spirituality that is available in Eretz Yisrael, well, let's call it more transparent in Eretz Yisrael. Doesn't mean a person doesn't have choices in Eretz Yisrael. Doesn't mean everything in Eretz Yisrael is uh, ay, 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 right? Uh, I don't know if it's the nicest joke in the world, but it's certainly a good joke. Nathan Sharansky, the famous refusenik from Russia, who uh, 
then joined, uh, joined the government, uh, became a minister and the head of the Jewish agency, you know, Nosson Sharansky. So he once said, you know, he was in Siberia for many, many years, he said, what's the difference between me and the other Israeli politicians in the Knesset? He said, I sat in prison before I went to the Knesset. So it doesn't mean, though we're not saying here that every single person living in the Holy Land, whatever his occupation is, 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 is doing holy business. The point is that in Eitz Yisrael, the Levush is less thick, it's less dense. Even if it's Betara, Master Kanal. Rak, because of the levush and asiya, the levush gas means a thick levush of this world. The ur gets much more concretized. It's hard to see the ruchnis. but the truth is But the truth is, Chazal are giving a limut schus. They're giving a limut schus, but don't get deceived by it. Even thick levushim are only levushim. They're not real blockages. They transport the oil. And therefore one should not lose focus and remain conscious and sensitive to the truth of the dveikas and alakus at every single moment. It's all a conduit for divine energy, and that's where, that's where I have to invest my stocks. That's where it is. Celebidic kind, celebidic, yeah. Speak about the time when the base of it. I'm sure today, like all the secular stuff. In other words, since the air and so on. It's even in halacha. Yes, even in halacha, right? Chazal tell us that Gazru al Gushava Avira. Chazal were geyser that the gush, the gush is the soil of Chutz Laaretz, and the avir of Chutz Laaretz has a din tuma. A din tuma. A person lands at Kennedy Airport <laughs> and comes out of the airplane. There's a push in halacha. The Rabbanon were geyser tuma on avir. It's called avir Eretz Amim. It's not stamapsa, a fictional, mythical thing. There's pashat a din, a person becomes tame. There's a din tumma, gazru al gush of avira, a tumma de rabbonon, that the gush, the soil and the avir has tumma, and therefore I'm in a place and I become, why, why, why would they do this? It's not to discourage people. It's not to be mavatal people. You're living in America, you shtik tumma. It's identifying the challenge. It's the best thing you could do to a person. The best thing you could do to a person is say, you're coming to a place, let me identify the challenge. You know why? Because two things. First of all, they know what they have to contend with. Having an enemy is not bad, as long as you don't think he's your friend. You know what I mean? I know this is what I have to contend with. Fine. More importantly, I don't get frustrated with myself that it's difficult. You're in a place with the Levushim HaGasim. It's more difficult. You have to have more focus, more... Uh, more, you have to be more conscientious. You can't just go with you can't just go with the flow, because the flow is not going to take you to where you want to go. You have to work harder. And like every chisarin, there's also milus. That's why they said it. Not stop to discourage, to discourage people. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net/donate.